All right, now let's extend the concept that we have learned in this problem to a case which is a bit more complicated. This problem is pretty similar to the problem that we just talked about. The only difference is we have moved that force to the very right part of that structure. Now that force acts at point D. So everything else is the same. Uh, length of the beam, the EI, uh, the value of the force, everything is unchanged, but I just moved P from B to the very right part of that structure. The big difference now is that the right part of that structure is not linear anymore because the external force acting on the cantilever beam on the right part of that structure bends that beam and the beam will not remain a line anymore. Let me take out that part and show what would be the deflection of that part. To be able to calculate the deflection of that beam on the right part, let me consider that this is a fixed support. Uh, I know that this is not a fixed support. There is a ruler support at that point. Ruler support at that point means that slope of the beam at point C is unknown. We don't know how much is that. And that causes indirect deflection as we saw in the previous problem. But Later on, I will talk about how to take care of the slope of that beam at that point. For now, let's assume that the right part of that structure is restrained by a fixed support. It means that there is not any slope at that beam at point C. Because of that loading, the beam deflects like this. Okay, I will call this beam as beam number one, and deflection of that beam at the right part is shown by delta one. We can determine how much is delta one. So we need to go to the table, in the table, the appropriate figure is figure number 7, and because we are looking for the deflection on the very right part of that structure, which is the maximum deflection, I can go and pick up this value. So the maximum deflection is PL cubed over 3 EI. Length is the length of that cantilever beam, which is L sub CD, uh, which is 2 feet, and I can plug the values and calculate how much is delta 1. Delta 1 will be PL cubed over 3 EI, P is 12 kips, L is 2 feet, and EI is 2200 kips feet squared, and that gives us 0 0.0145 feet as a value of downward deflection of point D. Now let's consider the left part of this structure. The left part is a simply supported beam. There is not any load acting on this beam. So it seems that this beam is not deflecting at all. But we know that this beam deflects. Why? Because there is internal moment that transfers from the right part or the cantilever beam to the left part or the simply supported beam, as shown in this figure. So the value of internal moment that transfers from the right part to the left part is called m sub c. And to determine the value of that, we can use the equilibrium equation. So mc is equal to p times distance of force from d to c, which is L sub cd. And this moment is acting like this on the simply supported beam. Due to this moment, the beam deflects like this. And as we see here, it causes the beam to rotate at point c. And we know that if the beam rotates like that, the right part of that structure goes downward like this. So the first step is calculating how much is the slope of this simply supported beam at point C. We need to get back to the table and read a value for slope of the beam. Um, this figure, figure number three, is the one that is appropriate for calculating slope of the beam caused by external moment. There is another trick here. When you want to use slope there are two values, theta1 and theta2. Which one should we use here? Look at the problem again. We need to determine how much is the slope of this beam at the point where the, the moment is acting on. I call that theta2, but it doesn't matter. I can call it theta1, I can call it theta c, or whatever. The point is, we need to determine the slope of the beam at the point where the moment is acting on. Now let me get back to this table. The slope of beam at the point where the moment in is acting on is shown by theta 1 in this figure. So we need to pick up theta 1 
which is equal to ML over 3AI. So again, it doesn't matter if we need to determine the slope of the beam at the right part or the left part, or if we call it theta 1 or theta 2, we need to see where the moment or the force is acting on in our structure. Let's write down the parameters that we have. Now in this beam, in the simply supported beam or beam number 2, length is 6 feet, and the value of moment as we discussed is P times distance of force to the ruler support or L sub CD which is equal to 12 times 2 which is 24 kips feet and theta 2 is equal to ML over 3 EI we can plug the values and we get 0 0.0218 radian this is slope of this beam due to the internal moment acting at point C and we just learned in the previous problem that this slope causes indirect deflection on the right part of that beam. Again, look at that triangle to remind you how we calculate that. In this triangle, tangent of theta 2 or theta 2 is equal to delta prime 2 divided by length of the beam from C to D. So I can say delta prime 2 is equal to theta 2 times L sub C D. Theta prime 2 is calculated in the previous step. It's 0 0.0218 radian. Distance from C to D is 2 feet. And that gives us the total indirect deflection equal to 0 0.0436 feet. Let me highlight the, different, the difference between delta 1 and delta prime 2 in this figure. Delta 1 is the downward deflection in the cantilever beam on the right part of that beam caused by the external moment the delta prime 2 is indirect deflection caused by the internal moment on the right part of that beam at the same point I used prime here to mention that this is, is indirect deflection of point D due to the rotation of that beam at point C I used prime here to show that this deflection is actually indirect deflection which is caused by slope of the beam. Now we can determine how much is the overall deflection of this beam at the right end. We can use the principle of superposition and say total deflection at D or delta D is equal to delta 1 plus delta prime 2 and that would be equal to 0 0.0145 feet which goes downward plus 0 0.0436 feet. Again, this goes downward. Look at the direction of the internal moment and the way that the beam deflects. They are both, beam number one and beam number two, they are both going downward. So I add them together and the overall deflection of this beam at the right end is equal to 0 0.0581 feet. 